Over the last 30 years, there's been a large increase in the occurrence of new diseases that infect humans. The majority of these emerging infectious diseases are viruses and bacteria that occur naturally in wild animals. But increased contact between humans and wild animals through activities such as land clearing for agriculture and hunting provide an opportunity for these pathogens to infect humans. And this is precisely what happened with the emergence of Ebola virus in Western Africa in late 2013. The Ebola virus occurs naturally in bats and primates, and human infection may occur from the hunting of animals for the bushmeat trade. In the case of Ebola, it is thought the outbreak, which has infected almost 28,000 people, killing over 11,000, a horrifying 40% of those infected, started with a small boy becoming infected after playing with a fruit bat that carried the virus. Another major aspect of emerging infectious diseases is that they also infect livestock, including pigs and chickens, and this can lead to dramatic losses in valuable protein from the human food supply. One particular disease that I've worked on extensively is H5N1 avian influenza, also known as bird flu, which is deadly to chickens and also causes some human infections. This virus was first detected in southern China in 2003, but has since spread throughout Asia and eventually made its way to countries in Europe, Africa and North America. The total number of people infected by this virus was small, about 840 people with 450 deaths. But the major effect of this virus has been due to the death of over 500 million chickens and economic losses of over 20 billion US dollars. To many people, these are distant events that have little impact on their lives. And unfortunately, there is often a perception that the threat from new diseases is overblown in the media. This can be reinforced by the apparently low number of deaths and because the outbreaks are brought under control quickly. However, a major reason for this is that scientists and doctors have, in recent years, developed a massive effort to investigate and plan for the control of emerging infectious diseases, so that we are better prepared to respond to any new outbreaks. This includes surveillance work in wild and farm animals in areas considered at higher risk for new diseases, as well as providing training in developing countries for safe field and laboratory surveillance activities. In my case, this involves sending teams to teach various laboratory tests and genetic analysis for early detection of diseases in locations such as Cambodia, Kazakhstan, India, the Philippines and Vietnam. And it is because of these efforts that many of the outbreaks are controlled so successfully, which may contribute to the perception that these outbreaks are not a serious risk to our health. A good example of this is the SARS outbreak that occurred in Hong Kong in 2003 before quickly spreading to over 30 countries worldwide. This disease infected just over 8,000 people, killing approximately 800. Such small numbers of people infected may lead to the conclusion that SARS was not serious compared to many common diseases, such as AIDS and malaria, which infect and kill hundreds of thousands of people every year. But transmission of SARS was stopped largely due to the effort of these dedicated individuals working in global health. If SARS had continued to spread throughout the world, then instead of 8,000 people infected, we may have seen 8 million or 80 million people infected. And with a fatality rate of 10%, there would have been 800,000 or 8 million people dead. This scenario is not all that unlikely. The virus that causes SARS is a coronavirus, and there are other types of coronaviruses that commonly infect humans globally and cause the common cold. Just as with these historical examples, our best chance for combating future outbreaks is in understanding what viruses are present in wild and farm animals, and which viruses represent a potential threat to human health. And proactive surveillance, when there are no disease outbreaks is the best way to achieve this. But surveillance is very expensive and there is now growing momentum to develop predictive methods so that we may design more efficient surveillance programs. This has been made possible by advances in computing tools that allow modeling of massive data sets. Another key development in combating infectious diseases is to emphasize to people that human health is linked to both animal and environmental health.
As I've described, many emerging infectious diseases come from animals, and if we can control the viruses in the animal populations, we can potentially protect humans. This approach of combining human and animal health is termed One Health, which aims to encourage increased cooperation between animal and human health researchers to combat infectious diseases. Despite our best efforts, it is inevitable that new infectious diseases will continue to emerge. However, humans have, throughout the history of modern medicine, been successful in combating horrific diseases such as smallpox and plague. So, while it may all seem a bit doom and gloom, I personally find it reassuring that there is an army of people working tirelessly to discover the what, where's and why's of emerging infectious diseases in order to prevent and control future outbreaks.